is Northern's construction today, and we're uh, we're paving in Thomaston Corner, and we're right here at the junction of Route Three and Route Four. We're uh, we're doing replacing some base mix here uh, on a foamed uh, recycled base that we put down earlier. Um, if you look to some of my previous videos, you'll see uh, you'll see a video on the uh, full depth recycled asphalt. So we're placing our base mix down here now. Um, we're going at uh, 4.5 meters wide per side, so we're going to have uh, we're going to have part of the shoulder paved. Not all of it, but part of it will be paved. The balance of the shoulder will be a granular shoulder once it's complete. We're uh, using an SB2500 Rotec shuttle buggy to uh, get the asphalt into the hopper in the paver. The, uh, the purpose of these shuttle buggies is to, uh, is to receive the asphalt from the trucks. They mix it in the belly of the machine. Um, and then they convey it up into the uh, into the paver hopper. The idea of them is to uh, to minimize the segregation, to remix the asphalt, and uh, which ensures that the temperature is uniform throughout the mix. Um, any of the asphalt that lays against the outside of the boxes in cool weather can be cooler than uh, than uh, the other asphalt that's in the center. So the transfer vehicles do a great job of mixing it. We used to have a lot of issues one time with base mix and segregation. We, uh, we very rarely have uh, issues with segregation anymore. Hello.
achieved uh, compaction of uh, almost 94%. So we're pretty happy with that. So we're going to stick with the roller pattern that we have right now. because I'll lose my resolution here. I'll zoom a little bit more. And that's about all I can do or I'm going to lose my resolution. You'll see the breakdown or the uh, finish roller is at the back. It's a static roller so it, uh, it doesn't use vibration to uh, do its job. And uh, so it sits back. It, it tries to stay back at a distance. It doesn't want to be on the mat when the mat is hot. We like to see that breakdown roller depending, it depends on whether we're using warm mix or hot mix, but it generally gets on the mat around 60 degrees Celsius. So he'll take out the uh, marks that the rubber tire roller will leave on the road. The rubber tire will leave a fair amount of marks. You'll be able to see his tire prints. Um, just on the surface, of course, they're just shiny strips is all they are. and. Uh, so any, any indents or any marks or anything that are left in the mat, this uh, static roller that comes in the rear, he'll, uh, he'll be able to smooth those out when the mat is at a temperature where um, he won't leave any marks himself, but he'll be able to take out any marks that are left by the breakdown roller or the rubber tire roller. 
It'll be a while before he makes it up, so I'm not going to hang on here while he's uh, coming up, and we'll get some a little bit of video of him later on. This is probably the last pass that the uh, breakdown roller is going to be making in this particular section he's working in now and he's probably about to move up and uh, try to catch up to the paver again. The paver is moving fairly fast this morning and I expect to see the foreman maybe slow the paver a little bit to give the breakdown roller a little bit of a better chance for him to keep up with the operation. If the paver moves too quickly and then the breakdown roller has a hard time um, running his predetermined roller pattern, the number of passes that he needs to roll to get the maximum compaction. And uh, the more he lags behind, the uh, less temperature that the asphalt has for compaction. Once you get down under 115 degrees Celsius with the hot mix, you're just not going to get the compaction you require to, uh, to get into bonus. As I say, we had 94% previously in this, uh, this mix, so we've been doing pretty good for compaction.